Our next example in the photoelectric effect is, is asking for the eventual velocity of the electron as it's set free by the incoming photon. Again, we're assuming here that the photon contains enough energy to overcome the work function of the metal. In this case, we've chosen silicon, and the work function for silicon is 4.8 electron volts. And so, assuming it has enough kinetic energy, the electron will zoom away, and so now we're asking for the velocity of the electron as it leaves the metal. Starting again with the same equation, we can say that the kinetic energy of the outgoing electron is equal to the energy of the photon, the incoming photon, minus the energy required to overcome the work function. Assuming that this is a positive quantity, it will have some kinetic energy, therefore some velocity. All right, let's figure out what the kinetic energy is. So the kinetic energy is equal to the energy of the photon. Again, the energy of a photon can be calculated by saying it's equal to Planck's constant times the frequency, which is the same as hc over lambda. Of course, hc over lambda, that comes from the speed of light equal to the frequency times the wavelength. So here we can say that the frequency can be written as c over lambda. So instead of writing frequency, we can write c over lambda. All right, plugging that in here, we can then say this is equal to hc over lambda minus the work function. So plugging in the numbers here, we get 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. Speed of light, three times, <coughs> 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And then divide the whole thing by the wavelength. The wavelength is 100 nanometers, or 100 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And of course, this will give us the, the uh, energy of the photon in terms of joules, converting that to electron volts. We can go this is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the nine, minus 19, um, <clears throat> yeah, 19 uh, joules per electron volt that will convert that to electron volt and subtract from that the 4.8 electron volts for the work function of the silicon metal. All right, with the calculator, 6.626e to the 34 minus times 3e to the 8 divided by 100e to the 9 minus and divided by 1.6e to the 19 minus and it looks like this gives us oh, quite a bit of energy 12.4 electron volts, subtract from that 4.8 electron volts. That gives us enough kinetic energy for 7.6 electron volts. All right, so that will now be the kinetic energy of the electron as it leaves the metal. How do we convert that to velocity? The old equation that says kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared will give us the velocity. Solving this for V, we can then say that twice the kinetic energy uh, divided by the mass equals V squared. Taking the square root of both sides, velocity is equal to the square root of twice the kinetic energy divided by the mass. All right. Now, one thing of caution here. What if the energy is so much that the velocity is relativistic? Then, of course, we have to be careful. We cannot use this equation for kinetic energy. So after we get an answer, we've got to make sure that velocity is not too high. Preferably, it is on 10% of the speed of light. All right, let's see what we get. Plug in the numbers here. That's the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy of 7.6 electron volts. Of course, if we want to find velocity, we'll have to convert that to joules. So here's our conversion. So 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per electron volt. And take the whole thing divided by the mass of the electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. All right, so let's see what we get there. So keeping in the significant figures from the previous calculation, which is a little bit more accurate than 7.6, so it'll be times 2 uh, times 1.6e to the 19 minus, divide by 9.11e to the 31 minus, and then taking the square root of that. And what do we get here? Hmm, pretty fast. So velocity will be equal to 1.6 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. That's over a million meters per second, or over a thousand kilometers per second. However, that is still way shorter speed of light, less than one-tenth of one percent. So we're good, we're safe. That is not relativistic velocities. So this would be the correct answer for that problem. Okay, again, the way we do it is we have incoming energy from the photon. We subtract from that the work function, 
If this is greater than that, it will have kinetic energy. In this case, it did, 7.6 electron volts. We then use the kinetic energy equation to find the velocity. Of course, kinetic energy in electron volts has to be converted to joules. And that's how you do a problem like that.